Welcome to Watercolor by Scarlet Damon. So today I'm going to do a little painting while I'm talking to you. This is a technique. This is a technique um, using a paintbrush, some water, obviously paint and paper, and a tissue. So instead of talking, instead of giving you an example of how to do the tissue on a single square where I put down a, a wash of color and then I just, you know, put the tissue on top and show you that it took off paint, I thought I would go ahead and paint a picture using nothing but water brush and a tissue. So every time I bring that tissue onto this piece, and for the next eight minutes, um, you're going to see a lot of it because this piece was was heavily done with tissue lifting. Um, every time I bring that tissue down, I'm removing paint, and this is um, this is a fantastic way to do a whole bunch of things. One, I'm lifting off the the water, or I'm, I'm drying the paper just a tiny bit. Uh, two, I'm removing the paint. And then, let's see, as I just did, then I'm able to come back with a cleaner brush and kind of uh, soften that edge or give a better gradation on wherever I've just painted. So this is a pig. This is a tiny little baby piglet. And um, I was later told that his tail should be curly, and it should indeed be curly. But this little pig had a straight tail, so <laughs> that's that. Uh, there is a second pig that goes with this little piece, and the second pig has a curly tail. So if it looks like an elephant, um, please, uh, <laughs> um, yeah, let's, let's just avoid that, or let's, uh, let's ignore that. Um, I know it looks like an elephant. Elephants are, however, very wrinkly, and, and their, their skin is a different texture. This pig is pink, and he is very soft. His skin is very soft, and he's hairy. At the very end, you'll see there's little bits of fuzz and hair that I'm going to put on just around the outside because there's a little bit of light coming from the top right side and also from the front. So you can kind of make uh, the the look. You can you can kind of make out that there's a silhouette of hair um, glowing in the sun. So initially, I've put down some pink, and this is a Rosador pink, and then I've come back with washes, and these are very basic washes. This is a brown and a gray, it's a Payne's gray and a natural tint brown, but every time, but every time I lay a new wash, this is a, a delicate situation, so we're, <laughs> a delicate, not situation, you know what I mean, <laughs> um, where I'm putting down a wash and then removing bits and then letting it dry very little, if at all. Now, right now, this is wet and wet, so, okay, I'm lifting it off the sides because I want that, that curve in the body. I want that highlight, and it's really beautiful. I love the way the colors are mixing. Notice they're not being mixed completely on the palette. I'm actually lifting the colors off of the the tiny wells, the little well palette on the side, and then dropping them in. I'm not mixing them. So I'm allowing the colors to mix on the page. Now another thing that I was noticing while I was watching this and wanted to mention to you is that his ears are not symmetrical. Um, it, it wouldn't be possible that his ears would be symmetrical. You would think that as you're painting. You'd think, oh, well, um, they should be the same because I'm looking from one, one perspective in the back, and so they should look exactly the same. But the light is going to be different from one to the other. So on the right, the light that's darker on the top, and on the left, it's darker on the bottom. And by the time I'm done, they do even out a little bit, but you'll see that as I continue here. So I'm letting the paint dry. But not, not like I've, I've walked away from my piece. I'm letting it dry just a tiny bit. It's pretty warm in my room. I have a heater under my desk to keep me nice and toasty. Uh, just a tiny one. But, uh, but it doesn't mean that my table itself is quite warm. And that um, will obviously accelerate the drying time. So I don't have to get up and walk away. Also, I like working wet and wet. And this is going to look pretty muddy. This is, you know, I've talked about this in the past, the you where when you start, it looks amazing. Um, a few, those are my baby quail. A few layers in, it gets uh, a little mucky, and down by the bottom of the you, it looks terrible. And then it starts coming together as you pull yourself out of the you. And I think this is a great example of that. Um, it's kind of neat that I can show you examples of uh, pieces that go from okay to terrible to good. <laughs> <laughs> or at least in my opinion, to good. 
Next, using a brush by Rosemary & Co. This is the Radicator and this is the medium size. Um, I did a tutorial or a, a review of this brush just a few weeks ago if you guys are interested in going back and checking that out. Um, I'm using this brush to lift um, lift off some of the, the, the edges, the hard edges of the blooms on the top of his backside and here around the edges where the ear and, you know, there should be sharp edges where the ear and the body meet and there should also be sharp edges, so like kind of house cleaning um, where the, the picture meets the paper, these should all be pre precise and clear and crisp sharp edges. So I was using the eradicator to take out any any bits or pieces that may be flowing off into oblivion and they shouldn't be there. Uh, next I'm putting in some gray. Now this is a mix. Um, I don't normally use white. In fact, I don't use white so often that that tiny little square of white you see down in the bottom left corner, which is from my Cotman palette, my Winsor Newton Cotman palette, um, is I believe the only white I have, which is why I had to dig this out, but I wanted something lighter. I didn't want to use Payne's Gray, which was what I would normally have turned to for a light version of gray. Um, I wanted to go with the blue tinge, which would be the, sorry, I didn't use Davy's Gray. Um, and so I wanted to go with a Payne's Gray, which is a bluer tinge versus Davy's Gray, which is grayer, but I wanted to lighten it, so I thought I would use some white. So this gives me uh, it kind of anchors the piece. Now I realize we're still in the U, so it's not looking fantastic at all. We're still somewhere in the bottom of the U. And <laughs> the more I watch this, the more I think, oh boy. I mean, there's a lot of more. There's a lot of more. <laughs> what am I talking about? There are many more layers to come. Um, so also at the top there, I also put on um, a whole bunch of little tiny dots tiny dots slash lines which are going to when they dry they'll look like little bits of hair so he he's fuzzy of course he's a newborn little piglet so he should be fuzzy now the light is coming from the top right and a little bit from the front and so the back side should have form right it needs form and dimension essentially the whole body is really just a circle with two pillars so I want to form that circle into to create a round shape and this is where things get tricky. Um, not tricky in that I did anything wrong, but tricky in that I, you need more layers. The, the way to do this when dealing with watercolor, and especially when dealing with watercolor and a tissue, lifting with tissues, is to add on those layers. So I've worked on the body and then I'm working on the ears. And I'm working on the ears, and I'm lifting off the edges. I want that to be a beautiful gradation wash. And then I come back to the body, and when again, I add more. Then I go off to the ears, and, I, and then back to the body again. So there's kind of like a rhythm happening here while I'm working on the other parts. And it's a very small piece, obviously. When I'm working out on the ears, I'm allowing the body to dry. And when I'm working on the body, I'm allowing the ears to dry. Coming back with that eradicator is so important just doing those final touch-ups, making sure it's perfect. Um, at this point, I think we've pulled ourselves out of the U and it's finally starting to look like a, like a piece. Now, I do wanna add this second little guy at some point, so I'll come back and do that later. Um, I hope you enjoyed this cute little piglet and I hope you paid attention and noticed how often I used the tissue to lift that paint out because that was really what this whole tutorial is about. Thanks for watching, I'm Scarlett, and I will see you in the next tutorial. Toodaloo!